both in behavior and physiology that occur over 24 hours. So I have a clock here. Um, and I've highlighted some of the, the key behavioral changes that we see. The first um, important one is that in the morning, the body experiences a sharp rise in blood pressure. Um, so before you wake up, so your body's actually waking up before you do um, and getting ready for the day. Um, the next important one, this is very important for me right now, is that in the morning you have highest alertness. Um, so you can all pay attention and hopefully understand what I'm saying. Um, and the last one um, sort of parallels the sharp rise in blood pressure we see in the morning. It's actually melatonin secretion starts um, at the night before you go to bed. Um, and melatonin is a molecule that's really important for sleep, so we see that the body, again, is getting ready um, for its next physiological and behavioral change. Um, the region of the brain that locates this, or that regulates our circadian behavior is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Um, it's a small set of cells in the hypothalamus that receives light input from the eyes. Um, and the suprachiasmatic nucleus is the uh, location of the body's internal clock, and we see that it's the master regulator of circadian behavior. So how does it do this? As I said, there's the internal clock, and inside this clock, there are transcriptional feedback loops that um, have a rhythm of about 24 hours, uh, a period of about 24 hours, and we can actually track this. So if you track the transcription, you see that it oscillates up and down. Um, and you can also visualize this. So this is a brain slice um, taken from a mouse that contains the SCN, and these are gonna be 24 hour um, time lapses. And so more uh, luminescence indicates more activity, so you can see, just like we do over here, that we're oscillating activity up and down over a 24 hour period. And this transcriptional loop drives electrical activity in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which again is the regulator of circadian behavior. Um, and it's very similar, so it parallels what we saw earlier. We can see the cellular activity change over 24 hour period. And again, I've got a, we have a video from a slice that's been taken from a brain that contains the SCN. And so more fluorescence here is more activity over 24 hours and you can see that it's oscillating just like we saw before. And this oscillation of electrical activity in the SCN drives behavioral output. Um, so given that the transcriptional, or given that the electrical activity of SCN neurons um, drives behavioral output, what the Auto Lab wants to see is how does the internal clock drive um, the electrical activity in the SCN. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Um, so we found in flies that there's an ion channel um, that modulates circadian, or that drives circadian behavior. This is a normal fly. And what I have here is an actogram. So an actogram tracks the locomotor activity of a fly over time. Um, and I have, uh, and so long, we have time here, and this is uh, light-dark cycles. Um, and there's four of them, and it takes, it's a total of 48 hours on each line. Um, and then the normal fly, in light dark, uh, so 12 hour light dark cycles, we see that they're very active during the day, um, and not as active at night. And then to study the role of the internal clock, um, we switched the uh, fly into constant darkness, so it's no longer re receiving external cues. Um, and you actually see the shift in behavior um, so the onset of behavior shifts a little bit to the left. This is because the internal clock is not precisely 24 hours, um, it's slightly shorter. So each day, activity starts a little bit earlier. Um, so to study this ion channel, we created a fly that um, is lacking it, and we see a very strong circadian behavior. Um, the mice, or the, sorry, the mutant fly is active in the night, so it becomes nocturnal, and then once switched to constant darkness, it's um, completely rhythmic and active at all times, so it really can't tell what time of day it is, and its internal clock, uh, uh, so showing its internal clock is not working, showing that this, um, this ion channel is uh, regulating circadian behavior. Um, recently, a homolog of this ion channel has been found in, uh, in mice. Um, it's called NALCN, and it's the sodium weak channel that I'm really very interested in. Um, so again, I have a normal mouse here, um, and we see that each time this, uh, this spikes, the neuron is firing. So we see in a normal mouse that it's very active. Um, in mice that are lacking NALCN, the sodium leak channel, um, they're almost completely silent. So they're, they're very inactive. Um, we have a few spikes, but you see a, a big decrease in activity. Um, so given the role of uh, the, an ion channel in regulating circadian behavior in flies, and given that it regulates membrane excitability 
in mammals, we wanted to see if the role of this ion channel was conserved in mammals. Um, and to do this, I wanted to create a, not, or a mouse line that um, is lacking NALCN. So it's a pretty standard practice to remove a gene to see what effect it has on circadian physiology, or to see what effect it has on physiology as a whole. To do this, um, I use the LOCKS-P free recombinase system. Um, and in this system, you have the, uh, you have a LOCKS-P site on either side of the gene of interest. Um, when Cree recombinase is expressed, it catalyzes recombination between the two LOCKS-P sites um, and then removes the gene from the genome so it's no longer expressed. And the great thing about the system is that you can use different Cree lines to control where the knockout occurs. Um, so what we did was we used one broad Cree driver. This is the CAMK2 alpha Cree, um, and it's expressed very widely in the brain. Um, it's expressed in 100% of the SCN neurons, and, but it also has broad expression outside of the SCN. So this broad expression of the Cree line means that the sodium weak channel we're interested in studying will be knocked down widely. Um, and you can see that here. Uh, so a darker color means the CAMK2 alpha is expressed highly, um, and that the sodium weak channel will be knocked down. And right here, this is the location of the SCN, um, which regulates circadian behavior. And I've actually zoomed in here um, in these ovals, and you can see that uh, the expression of uh, CAMK2 alpha is, is enhanced. Um, the second approach we used was the vasoactive intestinal peptide Cree line. Um, so vaso VIP is a major signaling molecule in the neuro or in the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Um, it's expressed in about 15% of SCN neurons, uh, but has really limited expression outside of the SCN, which you can see just at a, a glance here, there's a lot less expression of uh, VIP, and the uh, VIP is highly, highly enriched in 15% of SCN cells. Um, so we had, again, we had two approaches. We had a broad Cree driver um, that uh, knocked down the sodium leak channel both in the SCN and outside. Uh, and we had a very specific Cree driver which knocked it down in 15% of the cells. Um, and what we found, so in the CAMK2 alpha um, brains, sodium, or CAMK2 alpha specific sodium leach knockout, um, we had mice that were, they were, had stunted development. So you see very quickly that this, this is a mouse that is mutant for the channel. So it's lacking the channel and it is uh, much smaller compared to its normal um, litter mate. So this is from the same litter, they're the same age, they were born at the same time. Um, and we were actually able to record their behavior a little bit. So this is, again, the, a normal mouse. Um, and you can see that it's breathing normally about once per second. It's active. It's moving around a little bit. Um, however, in the sodium leak knockout, we don't see that at all. So this is this video is playing, and the mouse is not breathing. And then it starts hyperventilating, um, just sort of to catch up. And we actually saw that these mice died um, 23 days after birth. Um, and we think that it might be, have to do something with this irregular breathing pattern. Uh, so, because they died so early, we were unable to record their circadian behavior. Thank you. Um, so we were unable to record their circadian behavior. Um, but w in the VIP mice, we were actually able to record their circadian behavior. So they developed normally. Um, and again, I have an actogram for a mouse here recording this locomotor activity over time. Um, and in mice, you see that they are nocturnal. They begin being active, right? Um, as soon as the lights turn off, they remain active through the night and then are inactive during the day. Um, and when we switch it to constant darkness, we see that same leftward shift that we saw in the flies because of the shortness of the internal clock. Um, however, in the NALCN sodium leak channel knockouts, uh, we see a highly irregular um, circadian behavior. So activity during the 12 hour light dark cycle is mostly normal. And then when switched to constant darkness, they lose rhythmicity and they also um, have overall decreased behavior. So they're active less, and they're unable to see, they're, so they're, their internal clock is not telling them what time, time of day it is. Um, this is preliminary data, um, and next year I'll be, uh, I got my arm twisted a little bit, and I'll be writing a thesis on this, and um, continuing my, uh, conti oops, and continuing the study to see if we can find out more about the role of the sodium leak channel um, in circadian physiology. And all this data has shown and it says that overall, this is the first ion channel brain specific knockout in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which again regulates circadian behavior. And um, it suggests a crucial role uh, of this sodium channel in, circ in circadian behavior. And it also shows that sodium conductances um, show a role in SCN physiology, and before they've been characterized to have a strong role in um, potassium conductances. And I'd like to acknowledge um, people that have helped me along the way. My mentor, um, 
Dr. Matthew Falakis, who's taught me basically everything I know, um, our PI, Dr. Ravi Lada, and our collaborators, Dr. Fred Turek and Martha Feidel Turner. Thanks.